What's up, college football fans? Don't forget to check out and order your copy of Stiff Arming Football Myths, our latest football game plan book. So go on our website at footballgameplan.com slash books and get your copy. We have these available in paperback as well as in PDF form. Welcome to footballgameplan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, and welcome to another edition of Talking Ball with the Czar. I'm on the campus of Lake Forest College, sitting with Coach Jim Cannizzaro. Coach, how you doing today? Great. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you being here. Well, I mean, I just you want to jump right into it, because I know you guys got a lot of great things going on here, and just watching you guys on film, how explosive you guys are on both sides of the ball. I mean, you are a two-sport athlete at Greenville College, and um, you also look at you play both sides of the ball, which speaks to your athleticism. You are all conference as well, play two sports, like I said. How much of that do you look at when you're out on the road recruiting? We want guys who are versatile because we never know how they're going to fit here. We may have a plan for them, and then all of a sudden they show up with a different skill set or an improved skill set than what we thought. We want to get them on the field. So guys who have done multiple things, that gives us a chance to evaluate them. Um, our best players have been multi-sport athletes when they were in high school, and some of them here on college, in the college level still do as well. We've got 22 guys who are playing multiple sports, whether they're playing rugby or club lacrosse here on campus. We encourage that to keep them athletic, keep them moving, and the most important thing is we want them to compete. If all they're doing is competing for 10 Saturdays out of the school year, they're not really getting a chance to really thrive. And so you can create that in the weight room, but when they get to go and play against other teams and other sports, it's a whole different juice going. Now, offensively speaking, that athleticism you talked about definitely goes into play because you guys spread the field. I mean, you guys cover every blade of grass. How tough is that for defense to match up against? Well, hopefully what we get out of that is our guys are very comfortable in space and that space in relationship to defenders or their space in relationship to other offensive players. Creating more gaps, creating bigger windows for the quarterback to throw the ball. But most importantly, we want to give space for them to do what they do, to be athletic, to make moves, um, to take advantage of that one-on-one -on -one situation where they've got a little bit of room to, you know, to give a guy a fake or a dodge or whatever it might be to get upfield and gain more ground. Um, making opponents think while they're in space uh, may give us that foot, that yard that we need to make a five yard completion into a 50 yard completion. And the more we can take advantage of that, the better. Our guys being in those situations and in a lot of different sports, a lot of different avenues, we want to try to create as much of that as we can in any practice, any conditioning, any situation that we're in, make them have to be able to adjust in space. You know, we don't want to close it into a phone booth and make it into a fight, but we want to make sure we create a little bit more opportunity for them to be creative and use some of that reactionary ability that they have that's been developed in those other sports. And if we do that, we should have advantages. Now, spinning it to the defensive side, you guys are just as fast defensively, 65 TFLs. Why are you guys so good defensively and why you find yourself in the backfield so often? Um, biggest thing is we keep everything to a single gap. And so guys are only responsible for one gap, whether they're um, you know, a second level player or front level player. The other part is we use lighter guys with speed. We take kind of that philosophy that the, that the U had back in the 80s mm -hmm. where safeties become linebackers, linebackers become defensive ends, defensive ends become D tackles. And when you look at the guys that have been playing those positions for us the last couple of years, that's kind of what we've done. Um, the other thing we've got there uh, that has really helped us is we're an aggressive defense in our play calling where we're going to put some pressure on our corners. And we've had a great group of corners the last couple of years that have allowed us to do that where they can lock up the outside and then that allows the guys inside to do what they do and that's get after people. And I make it very clear to our recruits when they're on campus, if they're not aggressive and they don't like to hit people and go at them, then they should go play one of our conference opponents. We want to make sure we got the right guys playing for us. And that personality thing, you know, whether it's the guys that are coaching them or whether it's the guys that are executing it, we want that to be across every single facet of our defense. It's got to be aggressive, it's got to be fast, and it's got to be that way all the time. Now, you touched on something, how you use the old philosophy that you used back in the day. I'm always swinging the bat for size is not a skill. Can you explain to the people why that matters, why people think, why is that misconception out there? And you guys are able to do it in reverse because size doesn't really matter. Yep. The biggest thing is we're moving. And so if you've got a guy moving fast, but they've got a big guy that's slow, 
we're gonna have that advantage. And uh, we really focus on that, um, playing angles and positioning ourselves where putting them in a step behind us because we're moving as well. We're not reacting to what they do on the defensive side or on the offensive side. Our defensive guys are now dictating what the offensive lineman has to do. And though there are great offensive linemen in the league and great offensive linemen all over the country, mm -hmm. there are not as many of them. And we may have one guy or two guys that we struggle with, but that means our other guys up front should be having an advantage. And with the zone scheme, most offensive linemen are not stepping across the line of scrimmage on their first step in the run game. This allows our defensive linemen to stunt to a gap inside or a gap outside and be there before they are, or at least get into the backfield or across the line of scrimmage before they engage with them. And that's where the 65 TFL is coming to play. Absolutely. They might not be for minus seven yards, but they might, they're going to be for minus one. Right. right. You do enough of those, you're going to be all right. Now, Coach, this is a great university, and a lot of what you guys do on the field translates to off the field. Your teams excel in the classroom and also on a gridiron. How does one tie into the other? Well, one of the things that we look at is when we're looking at our guys in the recruiting process, we want to see guys that are great students. We don't want to just see a guy that has this great ACT or SAT score because that means he only showed up for one day. I want a guy who understands the process and is willing to work. Um, a guy that's disciplined in the classroom is going to be disciplined on the football field. It's a, it's a trait that is either there or it isn't. It can't be a one time a week or a two time a week thing. It has to be something that they embody throughout their whole life. Um, so when we're looking at those types of things, we want to start that process in the recruiting stage where we talk about it. The other part is we put a lot of time and effort with our coaching staff um, into our academic support for them. Whether it's our game plan for them where we lay out some different things to make sure that they understand they are accountable for their grades to their coaches and their team, not just to their professors. And uh, we have a great academic support staff throughout our campus that loves working with not just our players but with the entire student body. And if we can connect them with those people, their success multiplies. And um, you know, we just want to find those guys who are committed to both. I had a great coach back in the day. He was an old coach, and he said, "There's a reason why they didn't put student athlete in alphabetical order." You know, you never heard anybody call an athletic student. And so we want to make sure our guys understand that priority from day one. And um, that's something we preach to them continually while they're here. All right, coach. One of the favorite questions I always ask every coach I meet with is, "What's your coaching philosophy?" Because I'm big on philosophy and, and what makes coaches tick, uh, which makes coaches uh, do things differently. So what's your coaching philosophy? The first part is we want our guys engaged all the time. And, and that doesn't mean just on the football field, in the classrooms, it's civically. We want them to be um, fully immersed into what we do. We want them to understand that every time they put a paw on, okay, and they represent our program, that it's a big time deal. It doesn't matter how many people we have in the stands. It doesn't matter how many people are watching in the classroom or the cafeteria. We want them to be the ones that people can say, that's what we should be doing. I want them to be role models. I want them to be those kinds of people. I want them to embrace that. Um, most importantly, though, we're going to do it aggressively. We're going to get after every part of our program, whether it's the weight room, whether it's the classroom, whether it's, you know, we're doing a fundraiser for Relay for Life. I want our guys to take that opportunity to be first and to set the tone and example and say, we want to win in everything we do. And if we do that, we're going to be great. Um, Defense coordinator I worked with at Wingate University, Rashawn Jordan, mm -hmm. used to talk about being grizzled. And, and that's something we really have brought here and, and continue to do. Um, we lay it out to our guys what that means, um, that they got to come on campus for. Uh, but there's some things where we want our guys to just embrace handling adversity. We want them to really seek out opportunities to stretch themselves. And, uh, you know, most importantly, we want them to have a lot of fun doing it. And I think that our guys, you know, whether it's Motown Mondays or Way Back Wednesdays, we're going to incorporate music and have some good, you know, good times when we're in the weight room or in the, in the training sessions out of practice, but never at the expense of our continual movement forward. We always want to be moving forward, and, uh, you know, our guys make it a lot of fun to do that. So, Which is why you guys have had a lot of success on the field, off the field, and I've had a lot of fun today meeting with you, Coach. I want to say thanks a lot. Appreciate and it, man. And we wish you guys the best luck next year moving forward. Thank you. Come back anytime. Oh, definitely.